Good morning, thank you for joining me. I hope everybody's well. A couple of things before we start. The builders are here, so there's quite a lot of noise they're demolishing today. So if you can hear noisy building work in the background, apologies. I have come right to the back of the house and they're working right at the front. So hopefully there won't be too much noise. Sorry, I'm fidgeting because I've got bad back. I'm just um, adjusting the cushion behind me. <laughs> Secondly, I have extremely sore lips at the moment. Something has set them off, I don't know what. And um, I have got lipstick on, but um, if you can see red marks on my lips, that's what that is. I can see them myself in the mirror. I don't know if I can see them in the viewfinder or not, because I haven't got my glasses on. But um, just wanted to clarify what that is in case you think I've messed up my lipstick. <laughs> so, just sore lips. Um, anyway, I thought today we'd have a little chat about some wisdom that I came across recently and I would share some of it with you. Um, I recently read a book called Reasons to Stay Alive by Matt Haig. Um, I picked this book up in the library. Uh, I just It just appealed to me. I flicked through it. I knew the author. I knew he'd written before um, and was someone who lives with depression and anxiety and um, I haven't read anything he'd written before but I've had a quick flick through this book and it looked really accessible and interesting and broken down into small sections and I like the title Reasons to Stay Alive. Um, I just thought it was interesting and I very much, I feel like enjoyed would be the wrong word to use about this book because it was all about some of his darkest times with depression and anxiety and it really I feel like those are two words that are really bandied about a lot these days um with perhaps not the true meaning of the words having become a little bit lost in their overuse in our society these days and this book gave me a really deeper understanding of exactly how what clinical depression and anxiety must feel like for someone who suffers from it, lives with it. Um, and, and I found it a very illuminating read. Anyway, towards the end of the book, there is a chapter which is essentially 40 rules for life that Matt Haig tries to live by. Um, I can't remember, the, I'll tell you what the chapter is called says how to live 40 pieces of advice I feel to be helpful but which I don't always follow and as I read through these some of them really resonated with me and made me think and I thought it would make a good video to share some of them with you and talk about my take on them and how I've thought of them and that sort of thing because I think sometimes we've lived through a weird couple of years haven't we and I know that mental health issues are higher now than they have been at any time and now we have the whole Russia and Ukraine situation which is just beyond awful and that's another thing that we're all worrying about no doubt and sometimes we just need to strip things back and concentrate on what we can control and what we need to do to make ourselves feel better, good, great pick one of those. <laughs> anyway, without further ado, let's get into them. I'll put my glasses on. I'm not going to go through all 40, by the way, because um, some of them resonated with me more than others. So the first one is appreciate happiness when it is there. And that really resonated with me because I, uh, if, you, if, this get, if this video was a drinking game and every time I said resonate, you took a shot, I think you'd be on shot three already. I'll try and reduce that, the use of that word. This one really meant something to me. Appreciate happiness when it is there. I think all too often in this world, we're moving so quickly through life and moving on to the next thing and um, very much going through life very quickly and maybe not appreciating the moment when we're in it. I know I'm not. I know that I don't always take the time to take the joy in a moment that is joyful. And I thought that was just a really good reminder to do that and to appreciate those happy moments and file them away and actually live them before going on to the next thing. The next one that made me think was, there is absolutely nothing in the past that you can change. That is basic physics. <laughs> and 
although obviously we all know that, don't we? We're not silly. We know that you can't change anything that's happened in the past. I think perhaps if you're like me, and I know a lot of you are, you perhaps dwell a little bit on things that have happened that you can't change. And I, that's natural to a certain extent, isn't it? To chew over things that have gone before, but it's important to keep moving forward. You can't change the past. The only thing you can do is change the way you look at the future and change the way you're going to react to things in the future. Another one that we all know, listen more than you talk. Very good that think a lot of us like to talk a lot. I talk to the camera an awful lot, but I also like to listen. I feel like I am good at listening. I'm interested in other people. How many people do we meet in today's life who, <laughs> I can think of many occasions where I've met somebody and it's not to say they're not a nice person at all. They've been a perfectly pleasant person, um, interesting, engaging, nice to talk to, but I'll have spent maybe, let's say for argument's sake, an hour with them, and I know all about their family, their job, their life, where they live, and they know almost nothing about me because they're the ones who have talked a lot. I just had to run downstairs to um, answer a query with the builders and um, completely lost my thread of where I am. I think I was saying about listening more than you talk. When you meet someone, show an interest in them as well. Learn something about them when you go. Make sure that you know the same amount as somebody knows about you. Give and take, isn't it? I think that's a good rule for life. I like this one as well. Wherever you are at any moment, try and find something beautiful. A face, a line out of a poem, the clouds out of a window, some graffiti, a wind farm. Beauty cleans the mind. I think that's really true as well. Just take a moment now to look around you and find something beautiful just from where you're sitting. Find something that makes you feel a little sense of joy inside. Mine is the flowers over there that I have behind my mirror when I get ready in the morning. They're, just, they're only fake flowers, but they make me smile. I like them. Next one. Hate is a pointless emotion to have inside you. It is like eating a scorpion to punish it for stinging you. I don't think there's any more to say on that one. I think that's a perfect analogy of hating things, isn't it? Hate is such a negative and draining emotion. And yeah, why would you eat the scorpion? Don't do it. This is one that I had to read a few times to get the meaning of it, but it's such a valuable life lesson I feel that I wanted to include it understand the thought that sorry let's start again understand that thoughts are thoughts if they are unreasonable reason with them even if you have no reason left you are the observer of your mind not its victim I think that last bit particularly God, I was going to say really resonated with me but I'm not going to. That last bit in particular really spoke to me. It made me think that I very often do that. I think that we can let our minds run away with us and we don't have to. We can rein them back in and sometimes that is a good thing to do. This one I liked. This is something that I think we do as children, or I remember doing as a child, but as an adult, you don't do it, especially with these damn things all the time. Sit down, lie down, be still, do nothing. Observe, listen to your mind. That was the builders again, halfway through. Let me go and see what they want. They're just telling me I could put the electric back on. Let's go back to that one, shall we? Very disjointed video. Prepare for this for the next four months. This is day one. Sit down, lie down, be still, do nothing. Observe, listen to your mind. Let it do what it does without judging it. Let it go like the Snow Queen in Frozen. <laughs> Feel like, when was the last time you just let your mind wander aimlessly? For me, it's when I walk outside. I deliberately don't take headphones. I deliberately don't generally take my phone with me at all. Um, I like to walk with no distractions and just let my mind wander. And 
when I walk outside by myself that's really the only time that I let my mind wander and just think of the thoughts that come into it and I feel like all our minds need that a bit more don't they do you, do you think we just don't give ourselves that time I remember as a kid lying in the garden looking up at the sky uh, or lying in my bedroom or sitting on a chair just in a brown study as my mother used to call it meaning just miles away thinking your thoughts and unengaged with the world and that's a nice place to be and perhaps our minds need a little bit of that perhaps our, our brain computer chips need a bit more downtime and just to let the thoughts go through them here's one that again really spoke to me don't worry about things that probably won't happen if only it were as easy as that if only it were i love to catastrophize it i am a worrier of any worry you could name i i i have made a i could get an a level in worrying <laughs> and it's mostly about things that will never happen mostly um or maybe not mostly maybe 50 50 things that have happened or might happen or will never happen who knows but um yeah worrying about things that haven't yet happened is pointless here's another you don't need the world to understand you it's fine some people will never really understand things they haven't experienced and some will be grateful that one reminds me a little bit of the thing that says not all the people are going to like you and they don't have to that's fine it doesn't matter if all the people don't like you because they're never going to and that's okay this is one that i occasionally need reminding of three in the morning is never the time to try and sort out your life <laughs> any of you who have had insomnia worrying about things as i'm sure almost all of us has have particularly in recent times and probably over the years as well anyone who's been awake at three in the morning chewing over whatever it is that's keeping them awake knows that nothing feels as bad as it does when you're lying awake at three in the morning it really doesn't as the daylight comes so comes with it some clarity and everything feels a little bit better three in the morning is not a good time this is a good one be transparent to yourself make a greenhouse for your mind observe i think that's another one that you need to think about for a minute um and i think it's telling us that we need to be honest with ourselves about things about what we're thinking about and how we feel i think quite often we don't allow ourselves to feel things because we feel it's not right somehow but if you feel it it's a valid feeling or if you think it, it's a valid thought the next one has just really made me laugh because i'm sitting in here filming this looking out the beautiful blue sky and it says if the sun is shining and you can be outside be outside rest assured as soon as i finish filming this i am on my way out it is too nice to be in today i am going to go out and enjoy that lovely sunshine and we all should do that with spring coming hopefully there's going to be lots of sunshine and lots of opportunity to be outside three more and they're all really good ones this is his final three in the chapter and the first one is remember that the key thing about life on earth is change cars rust paper yellows technology dates caterpillars become butterflies night morphs into day and depression lifts and i think as humans we we like our comfort zone don't we we like well, myself included we, we we love our comfort zone sometimes change can feel really scary and not something that we welcome but change is a part of life change is very often very good and i know that changes that i haven't looked forward to in my life have some of them have been the best things that have happened to me and i think change is good we need to especially as we get older and we feel more wanting to be in our comfort zones more we ought to be welcoming change more embracing change is good for the mind and the soul i think this one is so very true just when you feel you have no time to relax know that this is the moment that you most need to make time to relax <laughs> relaxation is important i have been feeling burnt out 
not at the moment particularly but over the last couple of years there have been times when I have felt exhausted um, in different ways sometimes mentally exhausted sometimes physically exhausted sometimes just generally exhausted with the world and burnt out and we need to make time for ourselves to relax relaxation is a good thing I need to tell myself this more I think and it's not something to be put to the bottom of the list we must prioritize relaxation it's important and here's the final one and I think this now more than ever is quite important and something that we need to think about be brave be strong breathe and keep going you will thank yourself later I'll leave you with that thought. I hope you've enjoyed this. It's a little bit different from my usual types of video. And um, I just, they, the, those things just really resonated with me. Oh, another drink, another shot for resonate. <laughs> that it really did mean something to me as I read through that. I read it several times and I thought it's something that I want to maybe keep a record of and, and to share as well. It, is, it was a book that had quite a profound effect on me and um, yeah, I just wanted to share that. I hope you've enjoyed this or got something from it or can take something from it. Um, thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.